Sergeant Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy here at Beckley's Camping Center in Thurmont, Maryland. Here today to show you the all new, this is the Imagine XLE. It's a 15 FLE, meaning front living. And I think for a couple or a single individual, this might be the perfect unit for you. Uh, for more information on this camper or any others by, by means, be sure when you call, email, or stop by Beckley's Camping Center, you do ask for the Air Force guy. Be more than happy to help you with all of your camping questions and needs. So specifications, pricing, and my contact information will be down this video. Please do like, share, and subscribe to this channel to keep up with the latest and greatest in the RV industry. So let's get on to this camper. So built basically the same way as all your other Imagine XLSs. This one here is just under 20 feet. It's 19 foot 4 inches. Overall length, that's tip to tip. Okay. Up in the front, what you normally see on them. And I like the fact that what they're doing now is they're putting, putting the uh, actual floor plan model on the tongue jacks. Sometimes they put them on incorrectly, but I like the fact of doing that. So this camper is just a little bit over 4,000 pounds dry. Power tongue jack, two 20 pound tanks, and then you have the ability, if you wanted to, to put up to two batteries up here on the tongue. Of course, that's gonna come down to um, maybe a limitation you might have from your towing vehicle. Coming around to the off-door side, as you can see here, this thing does have a, uh, a small slide, but and the, the access panels for your storage, they're smaller. Keep in mind, this is a smaller camper, and you can see there's your storage. So you're gonna be kind of limited. I'll show you on the other side when we get over there what you, what you have on that side. But I do like what they're doing here, that they have the 110 outlets. Nice thing with that is if you're gonna charge your, you're gonna recharge maybe your power, power screw guns and so forth, you're able to do that. If you're camping in colder weather and you wanna plug in uh, a heated water hose, you can do that. Your cable connection, this is a light switch here for your front light. So this little switch right here, this is for a blue light, and I'll show you that when we get back there. It's back underneath where your sewer connection is, and I'll show you where that is. Nice thing being blue, it's not gonna be attracting the bugs. Battery disconnect, so you can see when you wanna disconnect it, you're able to do that, that way it's not draining your battery. You're hooking your fresh water up here, and of course you, you can fill your fresh water here by turning this to the fresh water, and then when you want to use it, you just turn it there, and, and you can use that either on water pump or if you hook the city water. But you have the manual way of filling your fresh water tank. Now because your manual fill is right here, that tells you right down under here is where your dump's gonna be. Now I like the way they do their dump. See, it's a nice big tube with the handle making it very easy. You don't have a cap that you need to uh, pull off and have to worry about putting somewhere. So it's gonna, freshwater tank's gonna dump much quicker. You also have right here, this could be your outside shower, both hot and cold water. Now, because you're bringing your water hose and cable up through here, something I'd recommend you do is put some brass wool in there to keep the critters from coming in your camper. So this is your front storage area. Oh, and by the way, we do have the central lights, and as you can see, right up in this area here, up there, that is for the tire minder. So if you wanted to upgrade and get the tire pressure monitoring system, it's already set up for it. Now, just like all the other Imagines, the door is magnetically held in place, so you're not having to use your head to hold that up while you're moving things in and out giving you a look at from the other side what your storage is. And again, another sensor light here. Now the back side of your camper, this is where you have your water heater, but this is also where you're gonna be dumping your black and gray. And I talked to you about that blue light. As you can see, there it is right there. So it'll light up this area quite nicely. Notice how easily accessible your low point drains are, both hot and cold right there. Now it does come with the manual stabilizer jacks. Now something I like about the manual stabilizer jacks is that you're able to put a little bit more weight on them than electric. And the other thing from a replacement standpoint, if you were to ever bend one or break one, as you can see, it's an easily bolt-on system. See the bolts right there? 
makes it very easy for you to replace them unlike the electric stabilizers that are out there. On the back of the camper, basically the same thing as all others. You know, you have your bumper. I don't necessarily recommend you putting your sewer hose in there. Uh, I'd get one of those uh, pipes and mount it up underneath there and actually put it inside of that because I tell you, these, these end caps on these uh, bumpers, in the event that one comes off, your sewer hose will be dragging down the road and you'll be replacing that rather quickly. But spare tire, your electrical hookup is back here. LED lights, as you can see, on the bottom there. And then, of course, it is wired and framed for that Furion rear observation camera. And, of course, with the ladder, you know what that means. That gives you an opportunity for you to be able to get up on the roof for things that you need to do up there. Let me show you what that is. So you might say, well, Paul, what am I supposed to do when I get up here? Well, you're checking your sealants. Anywhere there was something put hole through the roof or whatever, or the edges, you're checking for cracking, peeling, and bubbling. Uh, before you bring your slide out in, you're supposed to get up here and check the top of your slide out, make sure there's no debris there. Now you can have, you could add a slide topper if you wanted to, but let's say you just wanted to get up here, just kind of relax, maybe take in the scenery. This is something you could do. And quite the scenery, you will be able to take in, especially in a lot of those campgrounds. This is a walkable roof, so don't be afraid to get up here. Now this does have the Weingard Air 360. That's for your local TV channels and so forth. And then it is already set up for you for the Jaboni flat panel solar panels that you could put up here. Giving you a look towards the back there. Not a lot of room up here because it's so short, but you still get up here and just kind of sunbathe, take in the scenery, enjoy the weather. I mean, the weather is gorgeous today. Can't believe it. November 8th, and it's almost 80 degrees out here. I mean, look at the, the views up there on the mountains there. Now on your door side, you're gonna notice you have this nice large, well, I say large, I mean, it's coming out about eight foot from your camper, your awning. And it's slanted a little bit, but what I like about this type of awning, unlike some of the others, is that you just, all you do is to adjust it, you just pull down right here, and you see now if I want to just have the rain, the, or the water, if it was raining, rolling off the backside, that could happen. But the other beauty of this is I don't have to adjust that when I go to put the awning away. It'll self-adjust itself. Do not believe the people that tell you that you don't need to do that. The, once the water uh, puddles up up there, it'll automatically dump because of these struts on here. You'll be in for a rude awakening if you try that. So make sure that you uh, dip them a little bit and also be careful of your door. So we, if you're dipping the, the front one, make sure that you're checking to see, make sure that your door is not rubbing on the canopy when you have it tilted. Now this has the step above steps. Now the nice thing is with this is it's a solid step, right? You're not gonna get the shaking of the camper. Now let's talk about the pluses and minuses for the steps here. This is the more ride step above. You know, they fold up quite nicely in the doorway. You gotta make sure that you hold this door open all the way. The fact that it has the awning poles behind it kind of limit how far it opens up and you want it open as wide as it can so that this is not catching on the screen right here. Now, what you're going to like about this, they've gotten away from the pins. They used to have the pins that you had to pull, put in these holes here to um, adjust these. Now they've gone to just the, a little lever here and makes it a lot easier for you to adjust the legs. So when you're pulling this out, as you can see right now, I'm not holding that door open all the way. First of all, you need to unlock it because it's latched on that. Now you see how it's hitting the screen door. So you basically need two hands in order to open this. Once you get it past the screen door, then it's going to lower right down in place. Now, the plus side to these is the fact that you're not going to get the rocking that you normally would with the uh, typical steps. Downside is that if you're if you're parked too close to somebody, so if you have this in storage, somebody's parked closer than this for you, you're not going to be able to open and get into your camper. You're going to have to get a step ladder to get in over top of the steps. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But otherwise, great step. And 
Also, one other important thing you want to do is make sure that when you have it out that it's adjusted so you don't have a lot of gap there because otherwise that door will not close. Do not recommend that when you have the steps out that you're adjusting the level of your trailer, otherwise you could bind or bend something because of that door being closed on there. So keep that in mind when you're leveling your trailer if the steps are out. Just keep your door open. So now with that in mind, let's go on inside. You're going to notice you have a nice big grab handle here to help you as you get in. Not much to the trailer, but there's your front area, which is a nice big size dinette. And we're going to scan to the back. Now the nice thing with this layout, even with that slide out in, you're going to be able to utilize the whole camper. You're going to kind of have to reach around to use that sink in the kitchen, but you still will be able to use the camper itself. So I think what you're gonna like about this also is now what the change they've made. And you see this panel right here. This panel, you can, it has this little connect here. So it's a Bluetooth connect. It's a compass connect that you wanna go ahead and uh, put that, download that app on your phone. And then you're gonna be able to, everything that's on here, you're gonna be able to control or see on your phone, which makes it nice. Now let's take a look at when you're bringing the slide out in. Let's see. How much room there is so showing you it with with the slide out in so you see you use the dinette you're able to use everything in the slide out itself you're able to access still access the sink back here and you're able and more importantly to get to that bathroom so that's what it looks like with the slide out in give you a look from this vantage point as well. Now, if you're a tall person, you're gonna love this dinette made into a bed because that's over 93 inches in length, side to side, and then it's, it's the width of a queen bed front to back. So it's 60 inches by over 93 inches in length. So quite the bed that it can uh, fold into. I guess the only downside to this is that you're going to need to go ahead and keep your two cushions to make it the bed. Um, keep those stored somewhere else while you're using the dinette. Now the other nice thing with this uh, table here is, you know, right now I have it set up, that's how you're going to be folding it down in that position, but you don't have to ha have it in that position if you don't want. You can always turn it this direction if you wanted to, to give yourself a little bit more room on the sides, but then you could push it from side to side. It's a uh, freestanding table, so even if you want to take it outside, you could, and that would give you a nice U-shape lounger for you to stretch out and be able to watch TV because the TV, let me just slide on down in here. As you can see, the TV is right there by the door and this is quite comfy. Put your legs right up on top of here, leaning back against these cushions. Again, just giving you an idea of what it looks like in the camper. Now I know you're probably gonna ask you, Paul, how the heck do you make this thing a bed? All you're gonna do is you're just gonna unclip, unclip this right here. So this will unlock. So now it's unlocked right there. And then you're just going to be pulling this table this direction. What I recommend you do is put put your feet on on these two here and then push the table in this direction. So as you see, once you have it folded down, it's going to be sitting in there. Now the nice thing is you actually have some feet and some legs holding it in place. Now all we need to do is put these other two cushions in place. Now I think you're going to like how comfortable that is because look at how thick that cushion is. So those cushions are over seven inches thick. Going to make you a comfortable bed. Now right now I didn't take out the other cushions out of the way. So, and you might not need to depending on how big you are. Now if you remember when you were outside, you had storage going underneath there, but then on the inside you have these little drawers. I like the fact that they put this little winterizing checklist thing here for you. Now the other thing you gotta be aware of is that the Swintech slide brains are right back there. That's a little white thing you see there. Make sure you have your walkthrough specialist or whoever's doing the walkthrough explain how that works. I know there's a lot of people do not understand how that works and how you're able to utilize that for your slide mechanism for when you might have an issue. 
Now I know what you're saying to me, Paul. You're saying, Paul, where the heck are the outlets for the you know power for the uh, dinette area? Well, on either side, you're gonna have 110 under here. So you have 110 on this side, and then you have 110 on this side. And on top of that, you're gonna have the USB up on the front wall, left and right, giving you plenty of access to charging your phones, your iPads, whatever, while you're sleeping or during the day. So now I just turned on the air conditioner because I wanted to give you an idea of how quiet it really is. It's not as noisy as a lot of people think it is. And that's controlled right here. Now something you're gonna notice if in fact you have the Coleman Mach air conditioning system in here, it looks like this. These quick cool features do not work anymore because of the system that they're putting in there. And what they're putting is the RV airflow system. And what I'll do is, so you have an understanding of what that does, I'm gonna put a video clip down below. It's not something I did, it's something to show you what it does for you. You're actually getting twice the amount of airflow coming through your ducts. And believe me, for such a small camper, this is plenty of air conditioning on top of that being that you have a ducted AC for this camper. Now I know in interior storage is important and you can see that they're meeting that challenge by giving you that nice overhead storage and notice how the doors stay open themselves. You don't have to use your head to hold these doors open and then of course they latch quite nicely back in place so they're not opening as you're going down the road. As you come in the door, there's gonna be a nice little sensor light. That's really nice when you're camping in the evening. That way their light comes on. You don't have to futz around, try to see where the light switches are and so forth. Nice little cubbies there above where your TV is. Then of course you have for your stereo system. That's the AM, FM CD stereo with the DVD player. I have a video, I'll put that down below on how to utilize that. And a few more cubbies. And you're gonna like the fact that the heat is ducted, but it's ducted off the floor. So you can see it's blowing across and you're not collecting all that debris that you would inside the ducts if it was on the floor itself. Now, also, so I, I know this could be for your wardrobe if you wanted to, for the drawers. And then of course this shelf is removable so you can actually hang some clothes in there if need be. And look at how deep that is. That's a very deep cabinet. So pretty good storage here. And then additionally, right next to your refrigerator, you have additional storage, kind of for your pantry and so forth. And then look at all the other storage you have in the kitchen area. Now showing you the additional storage you have in the slide out area. There's the one right next to your microwave. And of course you're gonna have these three drawers here, and then your big pot and pans drawer. Of course that is right above the oven. Now the nice thing you like about the oven is you have this light switch right here. So you can turn on these blue lights by putting on number one or shut them off. Or if you push number two, now you can even see into the oven like you would at home. Now, I know this is not that large of an oven. You can still cook a 20 pound turkey in here. You just need to do it a quarter at a time. Now, for those of you that cook on your cooktop, you're gonna like the amount of space that you have here. You have a lot of space before you have the outside vent going right there. So you're gonna have height, and that's a three burner Furion cooktop. The other thing you're gonna like about this, especially for those that might have had older campers, is this sparker, not only does it light these three burners here, it will also light the oven for you as well. So let's take a look at your kitchen counter space and storage. Good storage up above, isn't there? And it all goes all the way through on that. And of course, because you have the water heater down below that, that's blocked off. So all you do is take off the screws to get to the back of the water heater. But there's good storage for you. Nice little sponge rack right here underneath the sink. But see how it's a, it's a nice big sink? And look at the windows you have back there. Gives you nice ventilation if you wanted. In addition to that, you're able to see outside. And then you have these nice two good sized drawers for you as well. So that is 
the kitchen area. What are you thinking? Does it work for you? Now, I don't know about you, but I like the fact that you have the pocket door here at the bathroom, because that way there when the door is open, it is not in your way. Now let's get in this bathroom and show you some things here. Good size sink area here, right? I mean, I know the sinks are rather small, but good storage nonetheless, as you can see. As I mentioned before, you do have a heat, you know, talking about the heat ducts. Remember, you had one out here. You're going to have one in the bathroom, which is going to keep it warm. And then, of course, more importantly, you do have an AC duct. I don't know if anybody has camped in one that didn't have those things in the bathroom. It gets hot in the summer. It gets cold when you're camping in the fall or the spring. And then these nice cubbies back alongside there. And notice how you already have the hangers set up for your towels, for your washcloths and so forth back there. Now they do not install the toilet paper holder. It is shipped loosely in case you want to have it installed. We can do that for you. And then of course your GFI outlet, as you can see, they mount it right up underneath of the cabinet there. So let's take a look at your cabinets above here. As you can see, there's your shipped loose toilet paper holder. And then taking a look at the rest of your, mag your um, medicine cabinet there. Now rounding out the bathroom, you're going to have that power vent fan. Nice thing with that is you can have one there and you have one here. Now the nice thing with these kind of power vent fans, you don't have to open a window to use them. It's just going to pull out the stuff that's in there. So the benefit to you, you don't have that cold or hot air coming in your camper when you're doing that. Now of course the benefit of having those fantastic fans or max air fans is the fact that if you wanted to have airflow, you do have additional airflow. But back into this bathroom. Take a look at this specially imported Italian tile from Taiwan. They do a fabulous job with that. So, good size shower. I don't particularly care for this type door here. Make sure you hold it because that is spring loaded. But me personally, I would just put a um, spring, spring loaded uh, rod in there with a shower curtain and leave that thing as it is. So that is the bathroom. What are you thinking of the bathroom itself? I wanted to give you one last vantage point of this bathroom. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the brand new 2021 Imagine XLS 15 FLE. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, and share this video if you would, please. Appreciate you showing up. Appreciate you watching. And I'll be coming back at you again soon. Take care.